I don't know why there's a delay. We often wonder about why is there a delay. Um, I think primarily because the criteria for making the diagnosis of autism, which we reviewed, is really set for the older child. It really has uh, things that I'm supposed to key on that don't happen until children developmentally are older and they've pa passed through developmental stages that allow them to stack blocks or stack a train. We looked at little babies where we we're looking at the core features, um, but little babies couldn't stack blocks or line trains. You have to be much older to do that. So, uh, so the diagnosis criteria is really set on older kids. There's also a wide variability in when kids learn to do developmental tasks. Not every child wa walks at one. Not every child learns to talk fully by two. And so because of that variability, there's a variability in the age of diagnosis. I think there's a delay in making the diagnosis and a delay in getting kids into services because that's just the nature of developmental disorders. We, as they evolve over time, it takes time to identify kids who are in trouble and families who need extra services. And then I think on part there's a general reluctance that we as pediatricians and as care providers here at Erickson and families and grandparents don't like to label kids. We don't like to say that Johnny's substantially separated or has a, 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 a horrible label like autism. And so there's just a general reluctance just to hope that time will right the ship and things will get better with time. And so I think that adds to the delay for the diagnosis. Here at Erickson, though, we, we, we want to make a difference. And so our setup that uh, you're going to hear about from Margaret is really to listen to parents first. Because no matter what I see on a video or no matter what I see in the interaction, if mom and dad are concerned about something, then it's my job to help them figure that out, whether it's autism or not. So listening to parents is first. And then increasing the surveillance for kids who are going to have difficulty um, across the first two years of life. So if a child is having difficulty at three months of age or at eight months of age, that, that there's an increased contact with people who know about uh, developmental disorders, and so they don't have to wait till three years or five years to get uh, the help they need. We've built a comprehensive evaluation here at Erickson so that children don't have to get the, the, a lifelong diagnosis like autism in 15 minutes or they don't have to um, get it from just one provider, that there are many different specialists that interact with families, from pediatrics to speech to occupational therapy to psychology, that get a sense from uh, many different perspectives from the child. So it's not just a, a short uh, visit where, the pedi where, where I give you my best hunch, but that's not the thorough, um, the thorough nature that's required. Um, the struggle between Asperger's and the autism diagnosis is there are, there are sort of two different groups of kids that were originally identified. So um, there, one was identified in Austri Austria and one was identified in the United States. And people are arguing, and that's the umbrella, that it's largely the, the same group of kids. They, were just, they just have a different time course. Uh, the autistic kids are identified earlier in age and the Asperger kids are identified uh, later in age. Um, and when we saw the rise in rate of kids with autism, the number of kids now who have autism uh, are, is much more because you don't have to have a significant mental delay or a significant cognitive delay to have the diagnosis of autism. So there's another, the people use the term high functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome to, to try to reflect kids who have more uh, higher level cognitive skills, higher level thinking skills, but also struggle with the core features, social reciprocity. To have higher level cognitive skills, you have to be older. You have to grow and be older for me to be able to say, yeah, you can do, you're going to hear about mathematics later on, you can do mathematics, you can do uh, uh, higher level thinking, but you have to be older to acquire that diagnosis. So Asperger's usually comes when kids struggle with the same core features we talked about, but they're older because they, they have to get older for us to know that they don't have that significant cognitive. When the children get the diagnosis younger, well, they, they don't do math yet. They're younger. They're, yeah. And so th that Asperger's syndrome typically doesn't apply. The formal criterion for Asperger's requires that 
no one thought the child has a la had a language delay before three years of age. So if there was no worry about the child's language delay before three years of age, that typically eliminates the uh, Asperger's. With, uh, kids with autistic spectrum disorders have larger brains. When we measure the outside of their, their head size, on average, not uh, every child, they have a larger head size than kids who are typically developing. And the idea is the brain is sort of smart. It has a period of overgrowth where the brain makes all of these connections and then says, as I learn developmental skills over time, I'm going to prune them down to be more efficient. So the brain says, we're going to grow too many neurons, and then we're going to prune them down to be more efficient. And one of the hypotheses is that kids with autism, they grow all those brain cells, but then they don't have the efficiency-making pathways. So for we saw that little baby and all that practice that little baby was going to do with his mother, and the mother says, goo, 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 and the baby goes, goo, 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 goo. All of that practice is for pruning down the, all of these neurons the brain has to the most efficient pathways for social human communication. And we think, or one of the hypotheses is that kids on the autistic spectrum struggle in that pruning process. They have, they, have a, they have a normal brain. The brain's growing fine, but it's not making itself more efficient. Or it has a delay in that efficiency process. So maybe uh, three, I don't look like I'm doing it too well, but five, I'll be doing it much fine, or seven, I'll be doing it better. So there's some maturation of the brain process. That's the most current uh, brain-based uh, worry for kids with autism.